Located at the top of Wisconsin, Bayfield County is considered by many of the locals to be the wild side of the dairy state. This is a place of majestic beauty with national treasures that include the Apostle Islands, the natural wonders of its sea caves, and rugged sandstone cliffs that frame the clear waters of Lake Superior. Home to bountiful inland lakes and trails that endlessly wind through the forest, it is where heart-thumping adventures and peaceful tranquility seamlessly weave into an outdoor paradise. This is Bayfield County Wild. Welcome to Bayfield County Wild, the show that uncovers those secret special places and experience that create a lifetime of memories. I'm Nancy Christopher, along with Mary Modiff, Director of Bayfield County Tourism, and we're going to talk about what is truly one of the most beautiful natural settings on earth and all the great things you can experience while visiting Bayfield County. Later in the show, we're going to talk to Mike Garnish. He's the owner and guide with Good Earth Outfitters, a company that takes visitors on 90-minute tours to the famous sea caves. Can't wait to talk about that. And Mary, I understand you've been on one of those tours. Yes, I'm lucky enough to have been out on one of those tours and it was just simply amazing how close you can get up and and look at the detail of the formations of the sea caves. It was awesome. You know, so that kind of brings me uh, to the question of where exactly is Bayfield County for those of, of us who don't know? Bayfield County is literally at the top of Wisconsin. You can't get any further north than that without going into Lake Superior. <laughs> okay. Um, if you could kind of describe this place, you know, for those who've never visited as well, I mean, what's it like up there? It's kind of different than the rest of Wisconsin, correct? You know, it is. And it's different from the rest of the North Woods. It's not your typical North Woods community. It's a place where nature and culture really come together. And I like to describe it as sort of the cultural hub of the North Woods. Oh, wow. And and you also kind of describe it uh, on your website as nature with amenities. Exactly. So (laughs) Bayfield County is the second biggest county in Wisconsin, and half of our land is in public ownership. So it's just unbelievable how much there is to see and do up here as far as getting out into nature. At the same time, all of our communities that are spread throughout the county have a vibrant culture in and of themselves where you can get really great food at the restaurants, do some shopping, and truly relax. So tell us about some of the really big things that you can see and do up there, especially during the summer months. Right. And the summertime is the busiest time for sure uh, to be up here because we have over 900 lakes just alone in Bayfield County, including Lake Superior. And so it's, it's the prime time to get out on the water. There's lots of orchards and berry farms up here, which is not typical, but we have this microclimate in the hills surrounding Bayfield, especially that make it just uh, an amazing place for berries to grow. And so between uh, being out on the water, visiting those berry farms, and then getting out on the trails, we just have hundreds and hundreds of miles of trails through the national forest as well as through the county forest. It's it's just unbelievable. So this is just a great place, place to be if you're an outdoorsy type person. And um, yes. it, it must be great fishing up there as well. What kind of fish can you catch typically? Well, so I'm not someone who gets out to go no. fishing very often. So so I don't know a lot of the varieties of fish. But, you know, lake trout, obviously, out on the big lake. And then um, we have a lot of great musky lakes down in the southern part of the county, especially. So d- describe for me some of the culture there. The local culture is um, really one that embraces nature, obviously. And, and so it's a combination of really relaxed atmosphere combined with a, a love of good life. You know, so we're talking about really quality food and restaurants, a big focus on local foods, because we have such a bounty of local foods, whether it's fresh fish, the local berries, lots of young farmers in the area. So just lots of fresh produce that are incorporated into the area restaurants. So everything there really is farm to table. It really is. That's just something that we kind of take for granted here. So when you have a place as as beautiful and with so many natural resources, that's a that's a huge responsibility, I think, for all of you who live and work there. So what what do you do to protect the environment? Actually, it's a lot easier to protect the environment when it's such high quality to begin with. It's challenging, you know, for I think a lot of communities 
that already have issues, you know, to deal with that. For us, we have a lot of local ordinances and laws in place to help protect our natural resources because we really want to prevent them from degrading. And so, so we have the luxury of being in that position where we're starting from a really good place. And so it's natural for us to be able to just protect that. And there are no stoplights there, correct? Yes, we have over 800 miles of paved road and not one stoplight. <laughs> how, nice, how nice is that? <laughs> you know, most of the time it's really nice. Uh, if it's a busy Friday when folks are heading in on a summer and you're trying to make a, a left-hand turn <laughs> to the highway, it's a little <laughs> interesting, but... I would imagine there's a lot of silent sports there, that when you talk about those 900 in, inland lakes, it's not all about uh, getting your speedboat out there and water skiing. This, it's mostly like kayaking and sailing. Lots of kayaking on the inland lakes as well as on the big lake. And, and those really are two different things, and people need to be sure to be prepared for that. Kayaking on the inland lakes, you can bring your little kayak that you use wherever you are, and it's awesome. If you're coming up to kayak on the big lake, it really takes a different skill level and different equipment to be able to do that safely. And that's something that I always tell people. If you're going to go out on the big water, to be sure to check in with the National Park Service before you head out. There's lots of good information and tips that they give folks before they head out and and just things to be aware of. So, you know, summertime, things are extremely active active up there. Tell us about some of the must-see things we sh- you should do when you're up there in the, over the next few weeks. Sure, absolutely. Right now, berries are really coming into the bounty of the season. And so definitely get out and visit some of the berry farms and wineries up in uh, orchard and farm country. It's You don't have to get out and pick your own berries. A lot of them have pick your, or pre-picked. And then, of course, the wineries are using a lot of the fruit from the surrounding farms, including White Winter Winery, which is over in Iron River. White Winter has won many, many awards for their wines. And also, they do mead and they do hard cider. And then they just recently have uh, started doing some distilling. And so they have some new products available there. And so that's worth a trip to Iron River just to get out and see the winery. You just said a word I just hadn't heard before. What is a mead? A mead is like what they used to drink. Kings and queens used to drink mead. It's a, it's made with honey mm. uh, as part of the fermenting process. So I can't tell you a whole lot of details, but but it's royal. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that sounds great. So anyways, Mary, we're going to take a break right now. And when we come back, uh, we're going to be joined by Mike Garnish. And he's the owner and guide for Good Earth Outfitters. And he is going to tell us about touring Bayfield County's famous sea caves. So come back. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Since 1954, Erickson Orchard in Bayfield, Wisconsin, has been planting and selling apples and strawberries ready-picked or hand-picked by visitors. Family-owned and operated, the Ericssons grow eight varieties of apples, along with pears, strawberries, raspberries, and blueberries when they are in season. Stop by the country store for the Ericssons' famous apple cider donuts and fruit pies, along with Muriel's jams and jellies, and a variety of unique gifts and food items. And new this year, Erickson Orchard is adding pumpkins. To find out when apples and berries are ripe for the picking, visit Erickson Orchard at 715-779-5438 or visit the farm at 86600 Betzold Road in Bayfield. Bayfield's Old Rittenhouse Inn is Wisconsin's first country inn and gourmet restaurant. Enjoy a stay in any of their 20 guest rooms in two historic Victorian homes and private cottages with fireplaces, whirlpool tubs, and spectacular Lake Superior views. The romantic bed and breakfast feels like home the moment you step inside. If you're staying nearby, you're always welcome to enjoy the landmark restaurant at the Old Rittenhouse Inn. For breakfast, brunch, or dinner, the Old Rittenhouse Inn just blocks off Lake Superior in downtown Bayfield or visit rittenhouseinn.com. We are back with Bayfield County Wild. I'm Nancy Christopher, along with Mary Modiff, Director of Bayfield County's Tourism. And we have a special guest with us, Mike Garnish, who is the owner and guide of Good Earth Outfitters. And you take tours to the famous sea caves. Tell us about what you do, Mike. Well, our number one tour is from Cornucopia, Wisconsin, out to the mainland sea caves. The mainland sea caves are the famous ice caves during the wintertime. 
And that's when they got their notoriety about four years ago. We had 138,000 people visit. Wow. And people are still coming every day that want to see them. During the summer, July and August, um, our boat tours are full pretty much every day, taking people out there to see the beautiful formations. So this isn't something that people can just come to Bayfield County and book a tour while they're there. They should probably plan in advance. It is best to book it at least a week in advance. Um, There are seats sometimes available the day of, but you're not necessarily going to get the choice of your time. If you're planning to come north and see beautiful Bayfield County, it is really best to, when you book your lodging, book your tours at the same time. That way you know that what you're going to be doing. And we really recommend that you book your tour. Anything to do with Lake Superior, weather can change in an instant. So we want you to change, or I'm sorry, we want you to book your tour basically at the beginning of your vacation. So if there is some bad weather, we have a chance to reschedule you to another day. And we try not to do that too often, but uh, with Mother Nature, um, it happens. So tell us a little bit about the tours themselves. What makes them so popular? Well, it's just the beauty of the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore Mainland Sea Caves. Everybody loves being on the lake. Everybody loves the beautiful vistas that you're going to see. And we have a very small boat, and I say small, it's 25 feet. We carry a maximum of six people. We have a minimum of four. And so it's basically no matter who goes out, it's still a semi-private tour. And being a semi-private tour, you get that personalized service. You know, when you're taking your pictures and you say, oh, I'm not quite done yet, I wait a little bit longer so you can get that last photo. So the tours that we take out um, are about an hour and a half to the mainland sea caves. A lot of people do like to go by kayaking, and and we really recommend kayaking also. However, there are some people don't have the time or they don't have the physical ability to want to kayak. And so we're a great alternative because we are a powerboat. We are still able to get into several of the caves. Um, We back our boat in there, and we're up within just a few feet several times during the tour. And people just love the beauty. It's The questions are endless, what people ask. And it all has to do with the beauty and the formations of you know, how they're created and how much they change. And they change all the time. I have many customers who go out many to- you know, several times a year, and they can't believe it looks different every time they go. I'd like to get that feeling of, of, of what kind of questions people ask. A, a lot of the questions they ask is one is how the formations were made. They want to go back in time. And then when the waves are crashing against the shoreline and you can not, not only just hear it, you can feel the you know, reverberation of the sound. We call that making sand as that rock formations are eroding away and that's re, uh, reverting right back to its original sediment. That sediment is then what washes up and forms our local beaches. And so a lot of people have questions about the formations, how much they've changed. Do I notice differences between the years that I've been doing this? And those are a lot of the questions. They ask a lot of questions about wildlife. We do have several eagles nests out in the area, and it is pretty common to see an eagle flying by during the tour. Wow. I mean, is, is there any danger when you go out on these tours at all? Well, anything in Mother Nature has danger. When you're on Lake Superior, there is a little bit of inherent risk. We do not recommend this tour for people who have limited mobility or people who have severe back or neck injuries because you are operating in Mother Nature. Lake Superior can be bumpy at times. We are very careful not to put our boat in position where it's going to be um, put you in danger. Um, There are a couple formations this year, for example, that have rocks that look like they're ready to fall. So we do not back under those so that we do take every precaution we can take. However, there is inherent risk with anything on Lake Superior with Mother Nature. So anyone booking a tour, what sort of things do they need to know? And is there a certain way they need to dress? Well, anything in the northern Wisconsin, dress in layers. It could be hot. It could be cold within the next half hour. So what we recommend you do is you dress in layers and you definitely want to have your sunscreen, sunglasses, your camera. And if you want to bring a rain jacket, you can. We do run in rain, but we do not run if there's lightning. I have a question for you, Mike. Something that often comes up is can you take a beverage out on the the tour with you or, you know, do you pack a picnic with you? On our 
public tours, when I say the public tours, these are the ones that are not private, where you're just a guest on, you know, one of the six on the boat. You can bring like a bottle of water or something like that. It's an hour and a half trip. Typically, people do not have time to even drink a beverage. When we leave Cornucopia, once we get outside the harbor, it is a 15-minute boat ride to the formations. Once we are there, we are there for 45 minutes to an hour and sometimes even a little bit longer. And when we are there, you are so focused on looking at the formations, you're not going to have time for a picnic on the boat. Now, we do offer some private tours, and on the private tours, that is pretty common for people to bring a small cooler and bring some drinks along. But on the tours where you're, you know, the semi-private ones where there's other people on there, typically there's just not time for you to have a picnic on the boat. Sure. If I remember correctly, at the shop there, you can actually buy a beverage and enjoy it while you're waiting to go out on your tour or maybe have something when you get back too. Correct. Yeah. Our gift shop, we do sell a selection of alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. And those are great for people who are enjoying the Cornucopia Beach while they're waiting or after they take a tour. They are welcome to bring them on the boat when it's a private tour. When it's the semi-private tours, it kind of is probably best not to. It's not prohibited, but it's just not encouraged. You do have all sorts of other things at that shop too, like ice cream treats and clothing and jewelry. Yeah, we have a very wide selection of items in our gift shop. We're we like to be a little bit different than all the other gift shops. So when you go to a gift shop in Bayfield or in Cornucopia or even over in Washburn, we try to have a different selection than everybody else as much as possible. Everything from cabin cabin type stuff to Lake Superior to the Apostle Islands and also home decor stuff. Plus, we have a very wide selection of jewelry. So, I mean, all this is just Absolutely sounds fantastic. Um, how do how exactly do we go about booking a tour with you, Mike? Well, the easiest way is to go to our website. And if you go to www.goodearthoutfitters.com, that will take you to our homepage of our website. And right on the front page, there is a link that you can click. And it says, book now, book your mainland sea cave tour now. Or you can go to the second tab over in the second tab is you know you can book your tours and it'll list all of our tours that we have available. Uh, not only do we have the mainland CK powerboat tour, we also have an island adventure tour. The island adventure tour is a trip that goes out to Sand Island. And on Sand Island, we drop you off. You're out there for about three hours and 15 minutes. And then we bring you back. That way you have enough time on the island that you can hike from East Bay all the way up to the lighthouse, do a tour of the lighthouse, maybe have a little bit of extra time to spend on the beach and then come back. And we also have a private sunset tour that goes from Cornucopia out to Devil's Island. And this one is really designed for couples, um, sometimes two couples. Most commonly, people that take this one are celebrating something special. Um, It could be an anniversary or birthday or something because it is a very private tour. And we go nonstop for about three hours, three to three and a half hours. And we go from Cornucopia out to Devil's Island. And then as we're coming back, past the sand island lighthouse it's right at sunset and so we come in the harbor right you know when the sun's going down so that's a very nice one and all those are available to book directly online at our website and again if you go to www.goodearthoutfitters.com you can find the link Mary, what tour did you take? I don't remember, Mike. Which one was it? We, I think it, you I took don't think, the main, mainland Sea Caves powerboat tour. Right, it wasn't a sun a sunset tour or anything like that. It was um, it was the the one where you can just get right up close and personal with those sea caves, and it was amazing. Wow. Well, listen, Mike. Thank you so much for joining us today, and I hope you come back sometime. All right. Thank you very much, and we hope to see all of the people that are listening to this up in our local area and. We'd be happy to have them on our tour. Thank you very much. That's great. And Mary, when we come back, you're going to talk about some of the things that we can do if you pay a visit to Bayfield County in the fall. That's right. All right. So we'll be right back. North Country Vacation Rentals is your source for a variety of vacation home and cabin rentals throughout Bayfield County and the Northwoods. No matter if your passion is ATVs, fishing, snowmobiling, hiking, or biking, North Country has the hospitality options that will make your vacation memorable. Check out all your vacation rental options at northcountryvacationrentals.net. And welcome back to Bayfield County Wild. I'm with Mary Modiff. She's the Director of Tourism for Bayfield County. And Mary, 
Wow, that was so exciting to hear what uh, Mike had to say about those tours. I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to come here, right? I'm thinking yes. <laughs> okay, so when they come here, um, where are some of the places they can stay? So we have so many places to stay, and only one of them is a chain hotel. Oh, that's cool. It is. It's really cool. But sometimes um, it's not easy for people to connect with those locally owned and operated places. And they're a little nervous maybe to stay somewhere that's not a chain hotel. But I would really encourage people to explore all the options that are out there because we've got everything from the Rittenhouse Inn, which is, you know, this beautiful old Victorian mansion that was Wisconsin's first bed and breakfast to, you know, your typical types of hotels and motels and motels are, you know, that term is a little scary to people sometimes. They envision some weird little motel in the middle of nowhere, but they're actually quite nice. And it's a motel only because it has a private entrance from the outdoors right to your room. And then we also have condos, cabins, cottages. And actually, Bayfield County has recently built a couple of yurts out in the woods. And <laughs> What's a yurt? A yurt is this round kind of temporary cabin, you know, it's made of canvas, but it has bunks inside. It has a wood stove. It's really, really awesome. And it's it's a, a way to camp without having to haul a tent or a camper. And, and so you literally walk in, hike in, ski in, bike in to the woods. And all you have to bring is your gear, you know, your sleeping bags and your food and whatever else you want. And there's a fire pit. One of them actually has a view of Lake Superior and that one books up quite quickly. The other one is down in the Cable area in the southern part of the county, which doesn't have that view of Lake Superior, but it has an incredible view of just the forest surrounding you. And it's an awesome, awesome place to be. So we have so many different types of lodging. I really encourage you to do a little exploring and, and contact us if you're unsure about where to stay. And, and where would they explore all that information? Sure, right on our website at travelbayfieldcounty.com. And if they just click on stay, we have all sorts of lodging options available there. And actually, when you first get to travelbayfieldcounty.com, there are two buttons with these interactive maps that are awesome. And if you click on one of those interactive maps, you can get to the lodging tab, which shows you all of the lodging on a map. So you can see where it is. You can get some information in a photo and it's really an easy way to kind of explore the county. Yeah, I've looked around that. That interactive map is really, really cool. Thank you. And and if people are going to be planning to go up there, um, let's talk a little bit about the fall and what people can uh, give us a little preview of what to expect and and so people can start making their plans now. Sure. Fall is actually my favorite time to be here. Not only do we have the, the orchards really come into uh, fruition, literally, with the, the different varieties of apples and apple festival, it's more of just a harvest festival atmosphere. And the fall colors are just incredible. When you have literally 400,000 acres of forest, you can only imagine what the fall colors are like up here. So, Oh, that's got to be amazing. It is simply and, amazing. Know, just, and that being the backdrop against crystal clear waters, I just... It's just got to be beautiful. It's peaceful. It's relaxing. It's rejuvenating. And I just can't even, you can't, you know, it's hard to convince people to make the trip to get here because it seems really far away. But once people come here, they're hooked and they don't ever want to leave. And that's what happened to me. I visited so many times. I decided to just make the move. Oh, really? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, I can certainly understand why you would decide to live there, Mary. That's it for today's show. We hope we've given you a lot of great reasons to go plan a trip to Bayfield County. And the next time, Mary, who are we going to be talking to? Let's talk with John Hamilton from White Winter Winery. All right. I want to hear about how those berries are getting put to good use. That sounds <laughs> and great. Making the mead or whatever. <laughs> so. All right, until then, I'm Nancy Christopher with Mary Motive, Bayfield County's Director of Tourism, and this has been Bayfield County Wild.